Welcome to episode 249 of Ungoogleable. This is Johnny, your host, and today my special guest is Dimps Gillies. Dimps is a professional athlete, pro mixed martial artist and boxer from Australia, and he's coming off a fight of the year candidate this past May against Josh Kuhn under the eternal MMA banner. Morning, I was watching uh, some of your older fights, and it's you literally have been facing like I watched the blood, I didn't know you fought Blood Diamond. I was watching the fight against her, um, David Martinez, grappler. Uh, and then, man, how come the media didn't talk about yeah, yeah. you? fought for the Queensland light heavyweight title April 9th. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, just I think it's a conflict of interest, and you know, it's boxing, and I think they want to keep it separated, so. Yeah, but you're. That's what I said, yeah. But that leads. But I, I just found that out today, and from like you as a fighter, your mindset, your legacy. That's some gnarly. That's a gnarly fact that I feel shouldn't be left out from the media's perspective because you went the distance with this boxer. It looked like you had a hand injury, and then less than maybe four weeks later, you you get in that war with Josh. Um that's wild man i feel like that adds to the the lore of even what happened in may with the eternal yeah yeah um i don't know if i didn't i didn't rest how i needed to in order to recover and then i had to fight at 70.8 for the the eternal one so so i sort of didn't get a rest and recover session i sort of i couldn't work my arms because my shoulders were were beaten from that that boxing match so i was just running like a, a week or two before like the week of fight fight night um for that boxing fight and um i was bedridden and i hadn't been to the gym all week so um i think it played a factor in me lose oh not losing but but draw you didn't lose. Going to the yeah yeah in your head you lost you're like if i didn't get the w that's not uh, that's a loss yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I didn't win the belt, so I take it. Yeah, for sure. UFC Fight Pass. You could. You, they have, I think, your last four internal fights, and so, and so I'm big on like body language, nonverbal communication, especially with fighting. Watching a fighter evolve in their style based on who they had fought leading up until their current fight. And man, the the guy you who fought Blood Diamond versus the guy, you, who fought Martinez, and then what we saw in May. That is that just instinctively you understanding, like, those yeah. adjustments to make? Or are you being guided or coached in that way? Or talk about that process, because you've added so much more head movement, shoulder rolls, striking on the countering. Like, what's that process like? Uh, uh, for the Blood Diamond one, it, it was – I wasn't at NTG, so people were at the same time, so – the rounds I was getting and were with people that I were training underneath me. So it wasn't really, you know, they, it wasn't good for me because they weren't at the level I needed them to be at. Whereas he was sparring UFC fighters and fighters. I, that's why I lost that fight. But but the rest of them, I had a game plan and a guideline set out for me. And I just, um, I just took it on board and tried to uh, simulate what we were doing in training. And, and then that was the result of... Uh, 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 of those other fights afterwards. But um, that last fight against Josh, they sort of just let me declare if I hadn't just done what I normally do anyway, it, it was going to be how it, it was going to be crazy um, or have that much output in over the three rounds. So, but yeah, the, the growth I've seen definitely from that blood, the IQ and the reads and head movement like you said it's like heavyweight it's queensland state title fight so i just rolled with uh, i just ro got the ball rolling and kept it rolling from that fight and uh, i came in who who does the mma you know through a leg kick here and there and but uh, that was pretty much the only thing i uh, wish i could have changed about that or as bad as they came off after that fight it's almost like they always talk about you learn more as a fighter you learn more from your losses than you than you do from your wins and having, like, I mean, Blood Diamond, high-level striker, I mean, his, his path is well-documented. He was throwing spinning techniques at you. In the first round of that fight, it looked like you had him rocked slightly. You took him down in the later rounds. I thought you won the third round. 
you were pressing the action the whole entire fight. That's kind of your style. And it was almost like everybody in that room expected you to just show up and just let him beat you, even him. And then it's like, no, this is a dog fight. You're going to have to like, because you're a guy, you, I look, all your losses are just decisions. You, you, you got to hit you with like an ax to get you out of there. Out of there. Talk, yeah, is that, yeah. is that, <laughs> yeah. you got a dog dude like that's another thing uh it's good the international media picked up on your last fight but it's like man a couple more of those bro it's like people are going to come knocking, knocking and, 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 and that's why that's it's exciting why it's... and i guess my point to this question would be do you find you have a renew like a renewal of like your career or even like maybe a confidence that you might not have had before this fight that you're like oh shit I could do way more or I could accomplish way more. Like I have the potential. Um, I know I, I sort of deterred me from the path that I was before I fought Josh. I was sort of wanting to just do boxing and, and work mm. the craft and, you know, fight the best guys in boxing. But after that fight with Josh, it reminded me why I learned and it's, it's more of a thrill for me. So formed the way we did, uh, you know, lit that spark that I had, had it had in them. Oh, yeah, it, was, um, it definitely lit a fire underneath me. I, I'm uh, more, I'm more eager to fight everyone now. Like anyone, even if they got the belts and blah blah blah, I'll fight anyone. And um, I have a feeling that last fight, uh, you know, it's gonna have me come out to my next fight feeling confident and very dangerous and uh whoever's standing across from me uh better watch out yeah man is 55 your natural weight your weight class would that be your ideal or is it 70 uh mm, i think uh, I, I i'm an i would be a natural featherweight if i'd done done what everyone else does how they cut cut like yeah. cut crazy and when I, if i'd done it like that i could make uh the, the next division under full light Wait, walk around normally what I should if I think I'm um, a natural featherweight and um uh, that's my next that's my next got the bull fighting the guys that lightweight and I I don't really mind where it goes featherweight lightweight I'm I'm confident in my ability to be able to uh, bang with the best of them man that cardio of yours like you mentioned online you know on your social media you've recently given up cigarettes no that's the other stuff but I if I was smoking cigarettes, I wouldn't have that cardio. Oh, sure, okay, you know. so just, yeah, so you just smoke. I mean, where I come from, weed's legal. It's terrible that you can't smoke. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, in 2004, <laughs> I, was, I was living in Long Beach, California in my 20s. I used to kayak to my weed doctor, <laughs> and it was legal. That was 18 years ago. <laughs> good, good little workout before. Yeah, Getting man. That smoke. You gotta, yeah, you, you got to get that workout. <laughs> What are you doing for your cardio, man? You, I thought, like, you know, if people watch the Josh fight, it's like, all right, maybe this was, like, the lights were bright and Dimps is a guy that could get up when the lights are on, but maybe his he doesn't fight like that all the time. No, you always fight like that. I'm fascinated with cardio at this stage of my life, my own personal training uh, regime. What do you do? Are you doing a lot of outdoor stuff? Do you do hill sprints? Hill sprints. Do you do, do, you do, are you, you know, running in the sand? Uh, when I, I do, do a lot of just road. Okay. Old school. Running. Um, you know, Matt Rowley, he used to say, you know, you shouldn't really be doing that because you're not training to run a, run this and run that. But I, I don't do it. I just do it to lose the weight and it, and it's a way for me to practice my breathing. You know, uh, I don't run fast. I just run at a good enough pace to, um, to burn some cavitation for me when I'm running, you know, in your nose, you have to find that rhythm, find that pattern of breathing. And uh, yeah, the, otherwise the cardio, I don't think it's my cardio that gets me. Uh, when you see me, I'm not tense and I'm not throwing it all stiff punches and not really exert too much energy doing so. Uh, so I think that's where, where it plays dividends for me. Yeah. But uh, my boxing coach did, did give me a different re regime and, um, and definitely, if I incorporate that a little bit more, I'm going to be a lot worse for everyone else. Like, it's going to probably be ten, tenfold on yeah. what I'm going to be capable of doing when I'm doing it. Yeah, your style, man. Your, your breathing's always on point. 
you you know, it's literally metaphorically and literally the Bruce Lee quote, be like water. You're never really there to get hit. Um, and if you do get hit, you're rolling with it. There was a punch I saw you working on against Blood Diamond in 2020 that I think I think from orthodox, you were going straight right to the body. It was it was one of your, it was a strike that you were sitting down on. You didn't throw it a lot, but when you threw it, it was like, oh, okay, he has that in his arsenal. Is is you you seem to be like you would you hide those the punches that you're sitting down behind the kind of volume strikes. What is it yeah, like? Yeah. What? what I, now my my question is the decision making process in the moment because that's what fascinates me the problem solving. How do you decide to make that decision? Like, all right, all right, you know, I'll go from here. Boom, I'm going to sit down on this next one. Are you watching their body language or is it something that you're just, it's part of the game plan? Is the fight nah, time? If I, if I press hard enough and I throw enough punches, I'm just more trying to bait a reaction. I'm just more trying to get them to engage. And yeah. when they engage, that's when I'm just going to sit on it a bit more because, you know, one of those, I'm more than confident to stand in that pocket with no fear of what my opponent can do to me. other guys in, in the sport. And, you know, the ones that do it like that normally have the most success. Yeah, man. How tall and, are you? Uh, yeah, I credit all that to that. I'm about 175 centimetres, 176 centimetres. So I'm pretty short, um, considering, you know, there's some there's some monsters in Featherweight. I've seen some six-foot guys, I swear, in Featherweight. It's, it's crazy Dude. to see. It's crazy to see. You remember Will, Ch do you know a guy, he's, he fought in the UFC a, a couple times. He fought Max Holloway. Uh, Will Chope, he's in Thailand now. He does, like, fucking, he does. He does. He's had left -way fights, Muay Thai fights. He's had over, I think, 100 pro fights. But he was a six-foot-four Featherweight when he was 21, 22, which is gnarly. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know how they make weight, those guys. Oh, man, some of those guys. I mean, even Josh looked huge in your fight. I was like, yeah, what? yeah. What is, did you feel that you had, a, did, you, did you feel that the media, like how much does it play on your mind or maybe not at all, um, that if you feel that the media or the broadcasters or the company wants another guy to win? Because I felt like, Josh, great guy, fan friendly. He had all, all the people cheering for him. Bit of a maniac, very marketable. But I felt like they wanted him to win that fight before the fight started. Do you, e even if I'm wrong, d did you have a chip on your shoulder coming out to that fight? Did you feel you had something to prove? Nah, nah. It was the fight I, I didn't want because, you know, uh, I've said it before, I've admired his work and I've watched majority of his fights. I've been on most of the fights he's He's been on, I've been on the same card. So I've seen a fight I felt like they were desperate to make. And by them, I meant the promoters because it was like, I think I had a month from when I, the fight I took that I was at a disadvantage from the start, but it never really deteriorated the way I thought. I go into every fight, you know, uh, with the same attitude, uh, enthusiastic about getting in there and, uh, I'm just happy to be in there when that door closes. It's 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 kind of crazy to uh, be able to express myself in there the way I do so naturally. That's what that's, that's what, why that's why I was compelled to talk to you because some of my I don't know if you read much on philosophy. Some of my favorite philosophers are guys like Alan Watts, and he talks about like life is play. Whatever you do, whatever your work is, whatever your passion is. If you could package that up on a daily basis and look at it as play, you're going to live a fulfilled life. You'll, you'll be enriched. And I love when fighters fight like that. You're so free in there. It's almost like you're, you're it's like a dance. And you, then you add the element of you, the danger component, which makes it, and that's where the fans come in, which makes it so compelling. Um, with your style, Stop. where it's at, how it's evolved to, would, I, I hate, I, I don't want to say who would you compare your style to, because I know when I watch you fight, you remind me of a certain fighter. Do any Do fans, fans ever fans tell you that you remind them your style of a certain fighter? Uh, nah. Just from a volume, like your your output, man. If you could drop, like. Uh, but after I watched that last um, Josh one, oh, just, just after that last fight, I acted up on because just watching him, I I was watching myself and I was doing things he does and. And that's the power of influence. And it's good to have those sort of guys around at the gym. And they, they keep me motivated. 
Nice, man. How's the hand? How's the hand healing? No, nah, it's really good. I avoided surgery. It would be for, I put my name down for November that I'll be able to fight, but I reckon I could go in September um, if if I, you know, if I d- do everything right and I'm smart about recovery and, you know, if I if I want to get there in September, I'll do, I'll look after my thumb and uh, give it a bit of tender loving care that it needs in order for it to get good again. Did you injure, did you hurt? Because after the boxing match against Leo Grant, the eight rounds, it looked like you were holding that same hand. Did you go into the coon fight with an injury? With, with an, was it already injured? injured? Nah, hell no, hell no. Nah, it was just, it's just the wear and tear, you know, over the coon, as you said, I have a lot of output and I'm really handling with that. I don't know what it's called, carpet tunnel or whatever. It's, yeah. always, it's always a wear and tear thing on my right hand, my power hand. But that last fight, I sort of got... My, my middle knuckle on the right hand because it just kept landing <laughs> on that knuckle and oh, annoying. It was painful to throw, but it didn't stop me from throwing it. <laughs> and, it and you didn't, you haven't taken any time off. Like, I mean, obviously you're not, sport, you're not, hitting, but I see you've been running. Um, is this something like, would you have done this if you would have lost? Like how, a fight career is so fragile because, you know, the highest of highs, the lowest, highs of, lows, lows, of lows, lows, you know, I've yeah. heard guys talk about after a victory, they would then say, if I would have lost this fight, I would, I, would, I would have stopped fighting. It's like, is this, you seem like you have so much fun in there. You probably do this in the backyard. You know, is it, do you kind of have, do you kind of uh, <laughs> create, do you have a plan or like fucking I'll, I'll fight till the wheels fall off? Yeah, I'll, I go in there prepared to die and not saying that I'm trying to kill myself, but you know, if you go in there and you, and you have those doubts like, Oh, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to, that's the wrong attitude. You know, I, um, it's a self dangerous and then, you know, the risk. So there's no point worrying about the risk or having doubts in your head that you could get hurt and this and that. That's the wrong attitude. You got to go in there willing to, uh, put your body on the line and do everything you can to get that W. That last exchange, the end of your last fight, as the as the, it was like a walk off home run, as the clock was expiring, you knocked them down. The question revolves around like rule changes because boxing has you know that you can't be saved by the bell. You have to you get dropped at the the end of a round. You have to stand. You have and to you have stand to, for the yeah. count. Um, also, also, you know MMA the round just ended. Like I don't know how bad Josh was hurt. Um, and then also like the scoring. Would you be, because I've been pissed lately, mate, because I have one of the things I do, we have a gambling show, and the UFC scoring has been miserable. And it's, it's wh- where the sport has evolved to, I'm like, why, why can't the fans see the scores going, or the judges see the scores going round and round? It would, change yeah. the ta- it would change the tactics of the corner. If you knew, your corner knew, and you knew specifically, I, I, that was a 10-9, the other guy, and there's one round left, it would change the technique. It would change your, your tactics. What's your opinion on that stuff? On like the rules, or do you not pay attention to it? That that would of what you need to do. So if you are falling behind, or if you do think you're ahead, it's not like be live and do it round by round. And you know, so you actually know what you need to do. You can play it safe if you need to, or or work harder, or look for the finish. You know, I, I think it's important. That would be a vital. Uh, you know, good good addition to the, the corners. They always say, oh, you run that round and, you know, but they can say it, but as you said, the judges, and it's not what they say and what they see, it's about what the judges score, and yeah. And then the announcers, and, uh, the announcers have their bid, and then you hear the announcers sometimes, the commentators, talking trash about the corner, when the corner might have told their fighter that they were up that round, and then it would just totally remove this aspect of kind of like question in that sport could evolve. That, that's one area that drives me insane just because it, you, you would think every other sport I'm watching basketball. I know who's winning football. I know who's winning like, dude. And then the judges, I don't know how it is in Australia I don't, down here, but um, uh, you would think the yeah. judges is, should at least maybe train or have a belt in something, or at least because how, how would you, it's wild that we expect people, humans to understand a flow of a fight or a setup of a fight or a tempo if they've never fought. So they're just yeah, picking, yeah. They're picking numbers. And do, like, do you have any, like, 
is there interaction with the judges? Do you know their names? Do, do they introduce you guys behind the scenes in the locker room, or is, is it nothing? nothing. I, I've never met a judge, like, officially. I, I don't even know which one. Like, there's so many people around the cage. I don't even know. But everyone else is sort of just an extra body to add to the thousands of bodies that are already around the judges, as whoever the judges that they score for it. Shitty. They score shitty. I can't do anything about it, and that's good enough for me. Dips, do they let you do you do they let you walk out to music that you pick or do they pick it? No, nah, yeah, they let us pick all our songs. Um, it's just whether or not you pick a good one, you know, because I had a habit of picking my walkout song, but then I would listen to it while I'm training. And, I'll, and then by the time I actually now I leave it last minute and I don't listen to it until it's time to walk out. Do you have like what sort of who, who'd you walk out to the Josh Queen fight? What song was it? I walked out to Machine Gun, so it's like a feature with like uh, some sort of rock guy. I don't, I don't even know who the rock guy is that's singing, but it's a really, really good song to get me pumped, that one. Okay. So are you are you a hip-hop guy or rock? Um, I sort of, if I want to be aggressive, then I know I've got to fight where I've got to be as aggressive as possible. It would probably pay to have something rock or metal, you know, something. Nice. One, one thing before I let you go. I call this show ungoogleable because, you know, I want to find things out about people that you can't search for. You know, when I put the intro on, people will know you're, you know, a professional fighter. People know you're a professional athlete. Maybe leave us with something that, I don't know, that you know now as a 29 year old, your birthday was in April, I believe, that as a younger man, you wish you would have known. Or that whole proverbial conversation, what would you tell your younger self? Some advice to maybe some of your younger fans that um, either are cheering for you or that maybe potentially want to become a fighter one day, what advice would you give those people? Uh, I would tell them to, you know, because there's a lot of shams out there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people who are running gyms who are, I wouldn't respect myself. Um, so finding a good gym and, you know, scout, the, scout the, the gym for the best guys. And if you can partner out of, like, you know, you, you're going to let them down and pull them back. So the earlier, the better. So, you know, uh, youth is, is a big thing in the sport. Uh, they, they don't really chase someone 20. They, youth, youth is a big, big uh, thing for the UFC and big platforms like that because the long, longevity of how much you can provide them uh, is ultimately what will sell, sell you to them. So... But otherwise, um, yeah, finding a good gym. Don't ask questions when you find that gym. You just do what you're told, how you're told. And, uh, you know, ask the whys, hows, and everything else uh, at the end of your journey or, or after the fight. And uh, I'm sure you'll get your answers. And what's your gym? Give them a quick shout out. Uh, NTG Fight and Fitness in uh, Slacks Creek. Uh, run by Nugget, uh, and uh, yeah, we've got a lot of exceptional talent there, and um, definitely family orientated. So anyone that has the kids and the big family is definitely with you. So uh, you know, it's it's something I would recommend for everyone. NTG Five Fitness. Thanks, man. 